the Sod Cemetery. I'm keeping a promise that Dean Coyle Morey, he pulled myself and my one-year-old son Andrew, who's, Andrew's 27 now, but when Andrew was one, Dean Moore pulled us out here. He said, Doug, I need you to look after the cemetery, and when you're finished, Andrew can handle it. And he wanted Andrew here to have somebody to follow me. That's pretty good thinking. But Dean Moore was a wonderful guy. We're in the 54th year of the Sod Cemetery. 100 times on the next time that we get a Sod win, Seminoles will have brought back Victory Sod against the crowd, against the odds, when nobody thought we could do it. We did it in 1962 when we went to play the University of Georgia. Nobody thought we could win, but Dean Coyle Moore told the team, I want you to go win. I know you can. You reach down, grab, grab me a little bit of that sod from between the hedges and bring it back. I've thought about it. The real founder of the cemetery, though, is Mabel Moore, his wife, because Dean Moore put the sod on the mantle at home. And after two weeks, Ms. Moore said, Coyle, you got to do something with that dirt. <laughs> and so anyway, we'll thank Mabel Moore. Thank you, Ms. Mabel, for, for founding the Sod Cemetery. The side, I want to thank some folks here today. First, the Tallahassee Democrat has done a wonderful job of letting people know about this. Leslie and Skip, thank you. Florida State Athletics does all the things to, to keep all this going. We appreciate them. The Extra Point Club ladies are out here every, there they are. They're here every Thursday afternoon doing our gardening. Randy Allen and Melinda Allen do our audio. Jim Hunt does our media. Thank you so much. And my wife Cricket makes these flowers out of our backyard. So appreciate, I got a wonderful wife. So thank you, Miss Cricket. Sod wins come though, not because of tradition. They come because of legendary football players. And I think today, this crowd is a testament that I think we have one of the most legendary, beloved Seminole football players of all time. Maybe Florida State graduates. This young man came to us from Baton Rouge, Louisiana in the summer of 1993. He didn't know anybody much here. He got assigned to a certain fifth year quarterback who was, uh, had been here for five years and he would go on to win the Heisman Trophy. The two of them that year would win Bobby Bowden his first national championship in 1993. Warwick Dunn went on to set the career rushing record at Florida State, which still stands. He set the single game rushing record, which has held for 21 years and should be good for at least another hour and a half. <laughs> Maybe an hour and 35 minutes. We'll talk a little bit about that. Warwick was a three-time All-ACC tailback. He was a three-time academic All-ACC tailback as well. He was, of course, an All-America. His number 28 jersey was retired. He's an FSU Hall of Famer. When he graduated from Florida State, he became the 12th pick in the first round of the NFL draft. He went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was a Buck and an Atlanta Falcon. Warwick was a three-time All-Pro player. He rushed for more than almost 15, I want to get it right here. He rushed for almost 12,000 yards. He caught over 500 passes for almost 5,000 yards. And I got on Google Maps yesterday, and I calculated, how far is 15,000 yards from here? I'll tell you where it goes to. It goes to the north part of the parking lot, north of Tallahassee, in Bradfordville, at the Walmart. That's 15,000 yards from here, and that's with a lot of fast, big people chasing you. <laughs> Warwick Dunn was voted the NFL Man of the Year three times. He was also voted by Sporting News to be the number one good guy in sports. If there is a better graduate of Florida State or better representative, I don't know, he's, he's right up there with it. Would you welcome, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Warwick Dunn.
Yeah, so. Well, I appreciate you guys coming out to uh, see me. I, this is crazy. So this is crazy. You guys are crazy. Sing like this. This is Florida State. This is Florida State. You're right. Warwick, thank you for coming down. Warwick drove down from Atlanta last night. He's a busy guy, but uh, he wanted to come see you all. So I I'll throw the softballs out to you, okay? So why did you come to Florida State? Well, in uh, 1993, I just lost my mom two days after my uh, 18th birthday, and every school was recruiting me to play defensive back, and I didn't want to play defensive back. And when Coach Bowden came to Baton Rouge, you know, I just said, Coach, I would love to come to Florida State, but I want to play running back. And he made a deal with me that day and said, hey, if you can come to Florida State, you can play running back. If it don't work out, you have to play defensive back. <laughs> so, it all worked out. It all worked out. All right, Warwick, you had a certain fifth-year senior quarterback as a roommate. What was Charlie Ward like to you as a mentor, a friend, and a quarterback? Well, I, I think, you know, at that particular time, I was going through so much uh, emotionally just after losing my mom and being the oldest of six. Uh, he was someone that I was able to, you know, just talk about life. Uh, someone we had similar mannerisms. We were both laid back and quiet in a sense, and we did talk in a room. Most people don't think we talk. <laughs> We did talk in the room, and you know he was there for me because you know he's been through. He, he was a fifth-year senior. He was able to sit and listen to me when I talked. You know, it's times I got emotional. I mean, when it was family day, it was you know the seniors go out and their moms here. It was it was just an emotional time, and he was someone that I could sit in the room and I can talk. And if I started crying, he didn't judge me. He he really helped me you know, keep it together. And being a freshman, being away from home, and I'm worried about the younger the younger ones, I mean, he was someone that I can definitely, uh, you know, sound off on and get some advice about life. Pretty some good roommate selection right there. That is very sure. Now, Mark, when you came right over here, did were you a DB for any days here in the beginning? I heard maybe rumor that Mickey Andrews tried to grab you. Well, Mickey talked to me. <laughs> But I wasn't, I wasn't having it. I didn't want to play, you know, I didn't want to hit anybody. I wanted to make guys miss and score touchdowns. And the crazy thing is, people don't know this, I was last in a depth chart. And, you know, going out there, you know, Ty McMillan that year, he blew his knee out, his kneecap, on the first day. We were in shorts. And, you know, a couple other guys had some ankle injuries. And all of a sudden now, I have to go in against the first team defense. And, you know, I was like... Oh my God, these guys are huge. And believe it or not, I started running for my life from that point on. It's been history ever since. So. We're glad you ran for your life. I blame Coach Sexton. I blame Coach Sexton. We're going to get Coach Sexton here. Ready. Now, there is a play in Florida State football lore. It's simply known as Ward to Dunn. You tell anybody Ward to Dunn and they know about that play. Let me set the scene for you. It's 1993. These guys have done really well. I think we're 10 and 1 at that point. But if we win in Gainesville, we go on to play in the national championship. If we win, maybe his roommate wins the Heisman Trophy. But if we don't, maybe it doesn't happen. We were up by three touchdowns, and then the old Gators started coming back on us. And it got to be 26-21, and I was in that corner, and there was a wave of emotion that you could just see old, old Mo, as Keith Jackson would say. He had moved from this side of the field to that side, momentum. And so it, Florida scored again. It's 26-21. They kick off to us. We break it back to the 21. Charlie throws two passes that somebody got in the way of. And then it's third and 10 from the 21. And most people will tell you that, I don't use that term, Florida Field was the loudest it had ever been. I remember my old friend TK next to me. We couldn't, we couldn't talk to you. You couldn't talk to anybody. So it's third and 10 from the 21. Now, I want to bring back work. You mentioned him. I'm going to bring back an old friend because he's going to do a visual when we, we do the Duke Gene Decker off. Would you welcome Warwick's coach? 30 years as our running back coach, Billy Sexton. Yeah. 